Hey everybody, how are you today? It's Sharon here from the blog I Restore Stuff, um, ready to show you some DIY things. Now we're painting furniture today, how exciting is that? So if you're joining me um, on the replay, don't forget to comment the word replay and there will be prizes um, selected within 24 hours after watching the live. So today I am staining some furniture, just going to quickly turn my live on down here so I can see read comments a little better. How are you Deb and Yana um, from all over the USA? Thanks so much for joining me. We're going to be painting some TV tray tables that I have had, gosh, since we were married. So like 27 years or something. Wow. So they were kind of, they've been a bit worn over the years. So I thought I'd uh, repurpose them today, refinish them, so to speak. So um, look, if you have not already heard, uh, if you are on Essential Stencils mailing list, the email list I'm talking about, you would have seen a sneak peek, guys, of the new spring collection coming soon. You can see what's in there. And I've got a link up in the description of the live of all the beautiful spring stencils that are coming very soon. Hi, Ellen. I'm doing really well, Patricia. Thank you so much for asking. Um, oh, snowy. It's snowy in a lot of places over there, it sounds like. Yeah. So if you haven't seen the spring collection coming soon. So today they're giving that sneak peek for everybody. So if you got the email, you would see the link in the email. There's also a link above in the description of my live. And today, don't forget guys, I've put a little supply list there for anything that I'm using in my lives today. Um, I've got an Amazon storefront with links there. You can see my affiliate links there and with some of the stencil links for the stencils I'll be using. So all of that is all up there in the description of the live. So when the live finishes and you think, oh, I didn't get the name of whatever she was using, that it's in the description there. So yeah, those uh, spring stencils are going to be available to pre-order on Friday. Woo! Who's excited about that? So yeah, that will be super exciting. Don't forget to use my code iRestoreStuff and save 10%. Um, so on Friday will be the pre-orders and they will ship February the 12th. So the pre-orders for the new spring collection, um, they'll be taking pre-orders on Friday and they will ship the 12th of February. But today you can see a sneak peek right there on the website and the link is up there. So, and I'm sure Essential Stencil will pop a link here on the pinned comments for you to sneak over and jump back on the live. But uh, thank you so much for joining today. I, if you missed the beginning, I'm gonna be doing some work on some TV tray tables. Now these are those folding kind, have you all seen them? Like these are 20 something years old. I've actually sanded and stripped back the top to raw wood. So I'm gonna be staining that today and adding some stencils for a little bit of a farmhouse look. And uh, I've got, um, I'm gonna paint the base of these black. Now I've got one that I've prepared earlier that I'll show you in a minute so you can get a really good look at the after and what that's gonna look like. But we'll stain that up today. And I've got a little uh, chopping board here too that's completely raw wood. So if you've got any kind of raw wood, these are fun projects to stain and then stencil something on. So I'm gonna be whitewashing that. I thought I'll stain these in a black and stain in a white and see how that looks with the raw wood and make it even lighter on there. It may not be so white because it's actually quite a blonde timber, but I just thought we'd try something different, hey. Okay, I'm gonna put my glasses on to see some comments. Um, all right, the stencils that we are going to be using today, if you do have any questions, pop them in the comments and we can answer them. Essential Stencil pops on here too and answers some of your questions too. I'm gonna to be using the number set. So Essential Stencil has six by six inch number set and you can either use that, let me take some out so you can give, and these are well used, so excuse my dirty stencils that aren't quite clean. Uh, they've got the little words up there as well. So you could use just the word, just the number or both together. So there's the one and the two and the three right up to zero. So you can join those all together, make birthday cards for people. Imagine a great big number card for somebody who's having a big birthday, uh, that kind of thing. So the other one that I will be using on the chopping board is the lemons three pack. And I think that's from the summer collection. So I just wanted to show you today, it doesn't matter what seasonal stencils essential stencil has there is something on these stencils that you can mix and match for all sorts of fun 
ideas. So, um, Carolyn, you're so excited. I'm going to use these. I think she means the number ones, maybe. And so we've got the lemon ones as well. Now they come with fresh squeezed lemonade stencil and an easy peasy lemon squeezy. And then there's this one that says, you are my main squeeze. So isn't that cute? I'll be popping one of those on that chopping board that I just showed you after we've stained that. So let's get on with the staining part of it. Oh, I just wanted to show you too, there are how you can kind of mix and match different stencils. So I didn't have these listed in the description of the live, but there are some of these types of stencils that you might want to put on a TV tray table like this. So you can see the table, it folds up. This is going to get a little awkward today because they're kind of furniture items. It's not like I'm doing signs on here. But there's this one, which was a fall festival um, stencil. But it's got the words in this pack, fresh roasted daily, which could apply to coffee or chocolate or, I don't know, things like that. So we've got some words down there that could apply to a TV tray, dinner meal tray, table kind of thing. We've got the kitchen set stencils that would also look cool stenciled a bit of a farmhouse table look on those. So that one's got the kitchen, the pantry, and the Bon Appetit. Let me show you before so I don't have to take it. See the Bon Appetit right there? That would look cute on a TV tray, right up the top, in the middle, down the bottom, wherever you like. We do also have the fun skinny leather stencils that very, look very much like the Ray Dunn brand uses. And you can make up your own words on there. Um, I picked out this one and sew together set. That's called the And So Together. They lived a life they loved. I thought this wreath part at the top, it's not actually a wreath, it's a, a um, I don't know, a floral emblem kind of a thing. That would look cute at the top of a TV, TV tray. It's even got one at the bottom here that you could flip it upside down. You could put those on the side over here or you could place just one on the, no, you couldn't really place it on the corner, but you could put, hang on, let me see if I can lift this. You could put one here and one up here like this, just kind of create a bit of a border to your table. If you've just joined me, I'm working on a TV tray table today and stenciling it. If you're in the Stencil of the Month Club, I do believe, I think, that we do have some of these coffee stencils yet, which was from my design from the Stencil of the Month Club last February, so that was 2020 February. Um, if you're in the stencil of the month club. So those are the kind of stencils you could put on a TV tray because they kind of got to do with food. Um, you know, a lot of people use those TV trays for their drinks to set them on. So coffee, um, coffee station, you know, those kind of things would be fun with that. So that's in the stencil of the month club only, that's it. If you're in there, check out the stencil of the month club shop because um, that's a lot of fun to see what past stencils if you've just joined. If you haven't joined, you can get 50% off your first month of the Stencil of the Month Club by using my code. I restore stuff is my code. Yes, thank you so much for sprinkling everybody. Yes, hit that little button and go woohoo. Spread it to the world. Our live today. Um, Essential Stencil has popped in there the link for the spring collection sneak peek. So I mentioned that earlier. We're going to be using a stain on these TV trays today. So I'll pop that back here so you can actually see it a bit better. I will kind of point the camera down in a minute and to do that I a lot of times I'll use actual stains and sometimes I'll use water-based stains or a oil finish oil and um, finishing oil type stain but I wanted to show you how easy it is to create a stain using a furniture paint and so today I'm just going to use chalk paint because I paint furniture so I'm going to paint the base of the tables the legs in this black which is just a chalk paint called noir, noir is the color it's an artisan aussie brand so you won't find it in the us but there are lots of um, chalk paint uh, types and furniture paints in the usa i've got an amazon link to some in the description of the comments so you can check that out there all i'm going to do is take the tiniest little bit of paint so when i do a stain i just simply water down the paint now last night when I did my first one, so I've already stained one of them. I won't show you just yet. I'll show you in a little, little minute. I don't think you can see it on the camera. No, it's no, it's out of the shot. So you can't see it just yet. Um, I wanna, hopefully I'm gonna match up the stain in the right proportions. Cause what I did do last night was I painted 
using my brush with regular, the chalk paint, full strength, obviously. I painted the base of it, I painted all the legs. Then all I did was I got my brush that already had a bit of paint on it and dipped it in water to create the stain. So I'm going to try and be a little bit more technical today, but bear with me because um, I do like to wing it a bit <laughs> and don't always have proportions for everyone. Uh, so I've just put, how much is that? It's not even a teaspoon, I don't think, but usually for a stain, I might do one part of the water-based acrylic paint or chalk paint and three parts water. So I'm just actually going to guess that and just sprinkle a bit of water in here, mix it around with my brush. I love how you guys just have little fun chats in the comments. Keep them coming. I love reading, reading all the discussion. And if you do join in the chat, don't forget we've got some um, prizes going at the end of our live today. We're giving away to three lucky winners. <clears throat> yes, um, Joyce Ann, thank you so much. You're very helpful. She's reminding everybody what I did say in the beginning was that the pre-order, you can pre-order those spring stencils on Friday and they will ship February the 12th. So pre-orders are open on the 5th of February. Um, and I would go to the Essential Stencil website and jump on their emailing list and they update everybody with all of their um, news. So you'll get that in your inbox exactly when all the new releases are happening, which is always good. Okay, so just using paint I'm creating a stain, so that's really quite watery there now. And I'm going to try and bring my table forward here. Point the camera over to the table. Well, you'll be at a little bit of a distance, but I think we'll make it work. All right, I'm trying to get the table in shot. So I can brush it on. What I do is I brush it on and then wipe it back with a lint-free cloth. If I get too much on, I would wipe it back with a damp cloth, but I'm just going to use a dry cloth today. So if you've just joined me, we're going to be we're creating a stain with just some chalk paint. I have stripped this table back, so I didn't strip the legs right back because I'm just going to use, um, I just got, gave them a scuff sand because I'm just going to paint them. But I did sand the tables right back to raw wood. You can strip them or sand them with a chemical stripper or a sander. Um, and what I didn't do though, is sometimes it's better to actually condition the wood before you stain it so that you don't, it doesn't get so patchy, but I'm just kind of gonna go with that rustic look today. So I'll just work in sections because um, otherwise it dries a little bit too quickly. Let me see how we go with that. So you can see the difference that's going to make. When I wipe it back, you may even see that it wipes back some of the stain. You want to wipe off the excess. Yeah, I can see a little bit of uh, blotchiness in my sander. Now the one turned out a lot nicer. I have had to completely sand things back again, you guys. When I, it don't often happen, but when you make mistakes, it's just paint. It can be sanded off. Oh, that cloth that I'm using actually has lint on it. Okay, so when you get to the ends of the table, that's quite often because the grain is going this way, that's what we call the end grain and can actually soak in the stain a lot darker. You can see that's a lot darker on the end than it is on the top of the table where the grain is going along the wood. So you get a back view and everything from the giant mirror that's in here behind me as well. <laughs> Hi, Robbie. Thank you so much. You're watching from Kentucky. Thank you, Joan, for sprinkling and sharing our live here today. So because I said I was going to work in sections, I just let that sit for a little bit on that section there. And then I grab my cloth and I'm wiping it back. Hopefully it'll all to blend in. See how that is quite a little bit patchy. So I may have to bit of redoing. Um, oh, Donna's asking, when are you moving? 
Well, our house, uh, if, I have, if you've been watching my past lives, I've mentioned that we are moving. It takes a long process for all of the, um, for the buyer, for their house to go unconditional when they sell. It's kind of a bit of a trickle down effect, isn't it? So they, uh, we're still waiting for that, what we call in Australia, unconditional moment where all the conditions, are, it's you know an actual done deal and that happens next Tuesday. So next Tuesday we will know definitely for sure the house is sold, there is no more waiting and then we have a settlement date which is when you hand over the keys and all that kind of thing, uh, the 23rd of Feb. So looking forward to actually knowing, knowing, knowing for sure, for sure, for sure. We've been packing boxes like crazy so <laughs> by the end of February we should be doing that. Hopefully I'll still be able to do all my lives, but I'll definitely let Essential Stencil know if we have to skip any of mine, but all right, so that one's stained and um, we've got, we can go a little bit darker if you wanted to, so you can kind of see that rustic look on there. Now this is the original colour and I sanded it back, so let me just show you this one over here. Yeah, I think the other one that I did last night might be a little bit darker in the stain colour. So this is what we started with. I'm just going to do this one super quickly. And, um, oh, you think I missed a side? I'll have to go back and check that. Thank you for checking. Can't always, you feel like a little bit rushed sometimes when you're doing a live. Hopefully you can see me doing all of this. Maybe I've missed one of these sides, these long sides over the other side. And sometimes uh, with chalk paint especially, and even mineral paint, when you've watered it down, it actually goes a little bit uh, chalky and porous because the, it goes into the wood grain and it's a porous finish. It goes a bit chalky and um, looks kind of a different colour. So just staining like this, giving a bit of a rustic farmhousey kind of a look. This one's coming up a lot nicer. I think I like this tone. And if it doesn't match, the one that I did last night, I, I think it's a little bit darker. So what I'll do is, if, it, if that one's darker, I just go over these with another coat of this stain to kind of match them up. Wiping back now. Yep, we've done all of that side. Sue's just checked out the collection, so you can check out that little spring collection and jump right back here to the live if you like. Lots of fun stencils there. Make sure you, on Friday, look for it. And you'll be able to order this Friday, February the 5th. Nearly finished another tray. Now I'm staining with just, if you've just joined, a black chalk paint and I've just watered it down approximately one part to, of paint to three parts of water to create a stained look and then of course you will have to seal it in the end and because if you want to wipe the tables down, that kind of thing, you want it sealed so that it's also good for keeping food on. Not that you put the food straight on it. You're obviously going to put it on a plate or something, aren't you? So, and the other thing I want to, I'll be doing in just a minute, I want to create a white stain to create a whitewash look for this board. I might actually do an experiment with that and do a bit of a, yes, I know what I'm going to do. You do something different on each side because I'm going to be stenciling it. You can have a plain side and then a stenciled side. All right, so see how we did that? We've created a nice rustic look. I'm going to put my stencils on that in a minute. While I've got the black stain here, I'm going to first do a bit of black stain on one side just to show you a bit of a difference. Then I'll do, I said I was going to whitewash this, so then I will do the whitewash once this is dried. So while I'm stenciling that, this will be drying. And I'll add some white over the top of it. I love how the stain gets right into the grooves of the, any little dings or crevices. 
This is a, actually a raw, completely raw. There's no varnish on this board at all. I just actually found it at a thrift store like this and it was brand new. There's obviously been no cut marks or anything on it. So um, it seems like it's been made to do a craft project with. So I'm just gonna do that on one side. I haven't done around the edges yet just for the sake of um, my experiment. Whoop. Going with the grain. Wiping back any excess. Have a little close look at that. So this is the raw, and then I've stained it. But remember, when we go over that with a finishing oil, it'll it'll lose its chalky looking chalky lookingness. <laughs> okay, so while those are drying, I'll show you my one that I did last night. If you've just joined me, these are TV trays that we have had in our house. Oh, since we were first married. So this is the stained top. See so it. That one's still wet, so you kind of can't really tell the difference, but that's the rustic look we've got on top. But look how cool it looks with the black under there. So I've painted that with the black chalk paint at the, on the base, and we've got the top looking like that. So now I'm gonna have to make sure that I sort of do these all the same way, because on the underneath, when they hang, they hang on this little tray rack back here. I don't know if you can see that in the shot. There's this little rack that they sit on. So when they're hanging, I kind of want my numbers, which I'm going to do, to be standing upright. So let me just have a think about this. Here's the tray thing, and that will go down, hanging that way. So I want it, my number to go up like this. All right, can you see this? Are we good? I could kind of lift it up on the table, but it's a bit tricky. All right, I thought, let's see, we'll put it over on the left-hand side of the table. So if you're sitting there, you've got your... If I don't know, it depends if you're right or left-handed, I guess. Okay? Um, all right, so I'm going to use one of our essential stencil brushes, which, by the way, are back in stock, fully stocked now, plenty there for everybody. So if you missed out last time, when you get your spring stencils, you might want to... Here's the sizes. There's four different stencil brush sizes. Um, yeah, you might want to pop those on your order form. Okay, another tray. And now this is all dry. The other ones, you might be able to see that. It's all looking quite patchy as it dries. You've got the, um, the lighter parts are drying. So I'm gonna put this up here. So I'm gonna do one, two, three on our three sets of tables, but you could choose any kind of stencils you like. I just think they have a fun farmhouse look about them. Industrial, industrial farmhouse. Does that sound right? <coughs> Okay, so I'm, no, I didn't want to use the white. Oh, what am I doing? I wanted to use the black chalk paint for this one. I might use white on that for the stain is what I was planning. But I don't, only want a subtle, um, I don't want it to stand out like stark white stencil on, a, on my black stain. I just want a subtle one. Okay, let's go with this medium-y sized brush. So, oh, sorry, trying to shift this for you. Hello, Karen, thank you so much. Yeah, so um, the one that, this one's completed on the base. I've actually painted the base of it black and I've stained the top with a black stain. Offloading my brush onto my paper and then stenciling away. So, whoop, I do probably need a little bit of tape anywhere on the edge of a stencil where you see that the stencil is close to the edge. You want to kind of make sure that's covered. So here we are, just giving this a really once over. I'm just giving it a little swirly motion because I've offloaded my brush a lot won't go bleeding underneath which is the key to good stenciling all right so let me show you there there's my number now when that's dry that's probably going to be a little bit thicker and raised on the surface but how cute is that so number one we've done and there's the base of it here let's 
see, this one was the next one that was a little bit more dry. Sanding. My sanding job was a bit rustic, but hey, oh, I've got to make sure I turn it up the right way. So, let me feel the base. Okay, got it right. Now our number two. And of course, when we finish this, we will seal it. The other thing I meant to, I was going to mention before is that it will probably feel, you'll feel that stencil on there, but you can sand it smooth and what sanding might also do is to just give it a bit more of a rustic look as well. Can you see that there? So this one I haven't painted the base so see the difference? And that one I painted black on the base. And then we'll go on to try our whitewashing technique on the chopping board that I did earlier. See that drying? See how it's really patchy when it's dried? So the darker parts are where it's still got to dry. This was the original, and this is the dark black colour stain, which actually looks brown, doesn't it? It looks like a chocolate colour. Okie doke. Just going over the number two now. So I've got three table trays, and usually they come in a set of four, if anyone picked that up. Um, something happened to the fourth one. Hey, it's been many years. We got these, as I said in the beginning, we got these when we were first married. So they're like 27 years old or something. And somewhere along our travels in life, one of them broke. Probably, I'm thinking, back before I did furniture painting and restoration, because otherwise I'm thinking, why didn't I just repair that thing? I don't know. Thanks, Christy. She's saying the legs look nice in the black of the, of the other one. Yeah, I'll show you that in a minute again. Now I've painted that one and I'll have to show you, I'll have to get into painting the rest of them, the bases this afternoon so that I can take my before after shots and show you pictures. I always like to drop a picture over in the Stencil of the Month Club Facebook group of the finished product. And when Essential Stencil puts their videos together or repurposes those two, they always pop a little picture of the after. Okay, so here it is on this, this is stained. It used to look this color. See that kind of orangey look, isn't it? That yellowy look of that pine goes after a while. And here's our stencil. We've got our number two on here, making some cute farmhouse tables. Now I'll pop that other one in the background. So you can kind of see the number one with the black legs. Can you see that there? And that's my table hanging at the front. Oops. You can kind of see the black legs there, can't you? There we go. Okay, and our last one is for our number three. And then we'll move on to our whitewashing. Totally eyeballing this, <laughs> guys. If you know me, I'm not a great at measuring. And anyway, so I'm putting this down the bottom so you can see that the number three, um, the actual number is close to the edge of the stencil. So I don't want my paintbrush, my stencil brush, to go swirling off the edge here. So what I do is I pop a little bit of tape right near the edge there. So besides holding it in place, it's also going to stop my brush from going over the edge. So that's why we do that. Hey, if you missed the news earlier, the spring collection is available for a sneak peek. It's not available for pre-order just yet, but it will be on Friday. Joyce can hear the crows out in the background. Yes, so can I. They're quite, quite loud today, aren't they? It's been raining here. Uh, it rained here for a couple of days this week, so I think they're excited. We are in the middle of a hot summer here in Australia, although the, the last few days it's been fairly mild. Yeah, um, where we could have just given these away or sent them to a thrift store, I thought, why not just upcycle them to 
So give them that farmhouse feel that I love in my house. They've got a whole new look, completely different than the standard TV tray, pine looking things that were kind of getting a bit tattered and worn, especially the tops, they get well used and well worn. Just made it, paint. So there's so many different things you can upcycle. I love to paint furniture that has just been worn and weathered and just giving it a new lease of life and repurpose, that's what I do over on my blog. So my blog is at irestorestuff.com and you can find a whole bunch of tutorials there and on my YouTube channel of how you can paint furniture or um, upcycle thrifted finds. Here we go, remember we've stained the table <coughs> and now we've popped our numbers on. So now we have one, two and three cute little farmhouse tables. So this one I was mentioning before, yeah, I can feel that chalk paint on top of there. So all I have to do is grab a little one of my sanding gloves and just a two, this one's actually a 2000 grit, but you can get maybe probably a 400 grit sandpaper would be enough. And so I'm just gonna rub that really gently over the edge and it will look a bit chalky, but once you've got your finish on it, so then I just go ahead and finish that with a, um, a tough coat sealer kind of a thing and so that will seal it all in and make it beautiful. All right hang on I'll leave that in the background while we work on our our chalkboard here and I'm going to use the lemons fresh lemonade squeezed lemon <laughs> lemon stencils for this one so if you missed it earlier this is the set and it's just called lemons and it's a three pack so if you go to essential stencil and in the search bar you just type in lemons and um, three pack I'll just leave that brush if you're not going to use your brush for a minute instead of it drying out pop it in a wet cloth and then you're good to go now I'll wash my stencils out in a minute so what I've done is I've stained using that black stain on the front but on the back I haven't done anything so I wanted to try experimenting with uh, a whitewash on this blonde wood to see how that might look. So it could create and blend in and mix in with that black stain and create a bit more of a driftwood sort of a look. So I'm just going to use a paintbrush. I've put everything so far beyond reach. I've got so much stuff that we need to bring in here. Okay. So just using again just some chalk paint that I use. And I'm in Australia, so this is just an Australian brand of chalk paint artisan but there's so many different brands of chalk paint that you can um, find in the USA Oop, there we go little tiny drizzle because we don't need a lot and I'm adding water to that so if you missed before hang on I'll pop you down here a little bit further <clears throat> to create a stain I just use some furniture paint and it's a water-based paint about one part um, paint to two or three parts water so but you can make it less than that if you want you can change your ratio <clears throat> and then I'm just going to mix that and you can't really see the white because I've got a white white um, a white dish but it's made it quite runny and you only need a small piece because we're only doing a small board but the idea of stains is that they just allow you to see through the wood to the lovely wood grain so this is the blonde wood side just giving it a light coat there with my whitewash i'll do half the board and see if we can notice a subtle difference okay and hear those crows and some other birds big and loud now i could wipe that back if I wanted to, to just um, wipe off the excess or I could just leave it like that. I like the way that it's sitting in the grain there. Can you see that? Oh, someone was asking what sealer will I use on the trays? Um, I will be just using a, an acrylic water-based sealer that it's, belongs to the same paint company but you can use this Fusion also. You can 
use Fusion Mineral Paints. They have a matte tough coat sealer. Let me see if anything will wipe back on this a little bit. I do like how it sits in the grain of the wood right there. No, that cloth is definitely not lint free. I'm picking off lint now from my board. But you can see a little subtle difference right there, can't you? So let's have a look on the other side. Now this is where I've, paint, I've stained it using this same stain I created with the black paint. So this will probably, I'm guessing, create a little bit more of a driftwood look rather than a whitewash. But some other different ways to whitewash is by using that uh, darker background and then using a white wax. You can also use a white wax to, to do this. All right. And the other thing is you could just use ordinary white paint and dry brush across here. So I'm just going to add a little bit of white paint across. And this is actually in a stain, so if, remember it's watered down. So it's all it's really doing is just creating a bit more of a grey, driftwoody look. Again, when you seal chalk paint, it sort of deepens the colour. If I bring it up closer, I think you can see less. It's probably better if I move it a bit further back to see. The light's probably shining on it. See that subtle, whitewashy kind of a look? Oh, who was that? Just said, I heard a plane buzz over your place and then about three minutes later heard a very similar one. You're in Logan too, Carmel. Yes, you are. Oh my goodness, that's so amazing. It's not often you have a neighbor come and <laughs> see you live. So that is crazy. Yeah, most of our audience here is from the USA, the good old USA. My husband's from the USA. He's from, um, was born in Emmett, Idaho but he moved to Australia when he was about 10. And he's a lot older than 10 now. Um, so and we have lived in America for a stint of our married life too, so there's that. A few years though, not too many. So yes, our kids say that they're half and half. <laughs> And Sue's from Canada, yay, I love it. So we do have some other countries right here watching. So do you like that? I like that driftwood kind of a look. So we've done a dark stain and then the white on the top. And here again is the whitewash just on the half of the board. You can see this is just raw up here. And then on the bottom is the, um, oops. Yeah, I do like that side better. I think that's the side I would like to do my Set a stencil on so we will start with that and I think I will do it in white this time I have run out of um, dishes I can use this one I'm hoping that's dry enough because I didn't bring my fan close mm, still a bit wet let's just run our cloth on that If you missed earlier, we did some recycling, repurposing, what do you call that? Refinishing of some old TV trays that we have had since we were first married. And we're about to move house. And uh, but what, a, what better time to then to just spruce them up a bit, make them look decent. Okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and do my lemon stencil on that. Here's the tables in the background. I don't know if you can see. Oh, let me pop you back so you can just see that number one. This is the first one I did, and I did the base last night, so I haven't done the base of the other. So see how I painted it black? And it did look like this. So it's just that orangey pine looking stuff. Um, I'll just go over the steps while I do this. I sanded back the tables completely, because to do a stain, what a stain is, it's staining the grain of the wood. So you kind of have to um, sand that right back to raw before you, uh, you know, stain. So, and I just used a um, watered down paint to stain it with. All right, I'm going to do fresh squeezed lemonade right here. And this would be a great for a lemon board. You know, you could slice up your lemon, put a couple of drinks on there. Once it's sealed, of course. Let me see. You could put it down the bottom. Maybe I'll just make it front and center. 
Now the board is wet, so I don't recommend uh, stenciling while it's wet. I'd wait for it to dry, but hey. Hi Janet from Florida. Thank you, Cindy. Donna says she loves the three tables too. Yeah, I think it'll be really nice in our home, wherever we end up. Okay, I, if you can't see, where am I? I've got to remember where I've popped the camera. Just adding a tiny bit of white paint in the corner here. It doesn't matter if it gets on that black, so I don't mind a bit of a gray look. <clears throat> Thank you, Tracy. You're always an encourager. Beautiful projects tonight. Yes, Crystal loves the lemonade stencils. It comes with the other, other two. Um, I'll pop them here so you can kind of see those as well. You are my main squeeze and, oh, I have to go this way. I'm trying to organize so you can kind of see that there. There we go, Oop. I forget that I turn the camera around. And just reuse one of these. And one of these. And a stencil brush. I'll use a little one. And then we're going to offload the brush if you haven't seen some stenciling tips here. If it's your first time watching a live, let us know in the comments. If you've never stenciled before, I'd love to know that too. If you've never stenciled before, let us know if you want to give it a go. If you want to give it a try. Ellen said she doesn't have the lemon set. Yeah, that's available. There's still some lemons left. Um, if you just type in, there's a search bar at the top of Essential Stencils website. So if you type in lemon, you'll find it there. Now, right now I'm pouncing and there's a reason for that. Usually you see me swirling, swirling, swirling. I just kind of have this feeling because the board is a little bit wet because we've just stained it, that if I swirl, there could be a bit of you know, running underneath because the board's wet. I don't recommend doing this, just doing it for the sake of the live. And as I say, if it doesn't turn out, I can sand it back and start again. I know it's a lot of work, but just trying to get through our projects and uh, one could use a white wax. Yes, so um, Cindy had a great question. You mentioned you could use a white wax. So a white uh, furniture wax, it's just a furniture wax that you use to protect your furniture and they have, they are lots of different companies who sell furniture wax, also sell colored waxes. So you can get a white wax or a dark wax to make it an antiquing look. Um, so sometimes I'll use a white wax. So all, all they've done is tinted the wax, the clear wax and created it white. Um, you add that to raw wood especially older, darker wood. It comes out really lovely over the darker wood and looks like a whitewash effect. So, and another way is to just simply drag your dry brush across the board with actual paint on it, not watered down paint. So that's another method. So there's a whole lot of ways that you can whitewash your furniture or your sign boards if you're a sign maker. Uh, someone asked, is it a white wax or a clear wax? I'm not using wax right now. I was just talking about if you wanted to create a whitewash look on a thing. What I'm doing is using paint. So this is just a chalk paint. I should have had a, um, a before dried version of my, my board here. It's a hot day here. I thought it might dry fairly quickly. Maybe if I had done this first before the tables, you know? Never mind. We'll see how it turns out. Oh, having a peek. I think it's okay. I think we're good, guys. Just my tape's not sitting down, so I have to um, hold it because, as I mentioned, the board is still wet from staining it. Okay, and when I'm finished this, I would love to just show you, uh, if I can go get my sealer, how to seal this table here. And I want I love this dark edge that's happening. Oh, you can't see that. Let me show you in a second. Finish this first. Because when you seal a piece of furniture, it does actually uh, deepen the color. 
right? You can see where the stencil was sitting, so it's still kind of wet in that square. That'll dry and it'll start to look like this. So, but you can get the idea. I'll let that dry while I go on to my other little thing that I wanted to show you. So on my table back here, my number one, I like, if you can see, that look is looking darker along those edges. So I do think that I'd love to go over this with another coat on my number two and three tables. I might go over that with another coat of that stain, the black stain. Hold on for just a second while I, oh, I'm going to have to do it this way. I'm just going to grab some um, sealer. So the sealer that I use is, let's see, it's just a, a flat matte sealer and it's water-based. I love using water-based products because they actually wash out in water and your brushes can all wash out clean and they're, um, you know, it's a lot easier in the cleanup process. The oil-based ones you have to use, well, with mineral spirits or turps or one of those other chemical kind of products. But I just wanted to show you the board and I don't have something to put this in. Grab another brush. In fact, if I just pour my water into here, I'll have another container to tip my sealer in. So here's the here's the table. And I wonder if I can yeah. you're seeing it there? It's upside down, but that's okay. Let's go this way. Oops. It's scratch on it. So I'm just using an acrylic sealer, it's a flat matte sealer. Um, a lot of companies that sell furniture paint also sell sealers, so um, Barbara says, what do you clean your brushes in? So I clean my brushes just in, I just soak them in water in one of these brush tubs. So you can just use a leftover container. Oops, I've got a little top on there. Um, I did forget to mention that a lot of these, if it's a matte sealer, you'll need to just give them a stir or a shaking or a roll around. Because what that does, it there's a matting agent that will sometimes fall to the bottom of a of a bottle of the sealer so just make sure it's all stirred up joy says it would be cute to put the lemons on the tables it would yep they would look cute on the tables i wish i had some lemons i might have to go and get some from the grocery store to um display and take my photos with so i've got some sealer in here and i just wanted to show you the difference that a sealer will make to the finish and the chalkiness that, that appears to be right now. So I'll just sort of start along the edge. And it does look whitish, but as it dries, you'll see that it will deepen the chalk paint colour. You might start to notice it on the number one. Just stop halfway down the table and see if you can tell the difference. Let's see. Move that up so you can kind of see that a bit better. So see the difference there that it really deepens that dark tones of the table. Whereas, um, hang on, the bottom is. It's all dry, completely dry, but it's chalky and porous. So with the chalk paint or the water-based stains where you have watered down a paint, you do need to seal them on the top, okay? Um, so I can do as many coats of that sealer as I want to to make it really seal really well. The more you coats you put, make sure you're just really spending a lot of dry time in between to make sure they're completely dry. All right, so there is my cute farmhouse table remake over. And I think we're ready to pick some winners because from today, today's live, we will get to pick three winners and Essential Stencil will pop the names in here any second now. And this is the other one. Uh, I used just a flat matte sealer. This one's an Australian brand, but you can get, um, I think I may have some links in the description of my live there, but there are some other sealers that you can use. I do have on my Amazon storefront which there's links to that in the description of the live up above 
uh, a whole bunch of things that you can stencil on, stencil finishing products, things I use when I'm doing my stenciling. So go check that out and use any of those links if you would like, that would be wonderful. So thank you guys so much. Here's what we did today. We learned about staining the board with a whitewash. There's a half and half example for you. This was what it was previously. We did a whitewash with just the white paint. Then I did dark paint and it's still drying, you can see. And then I added my fresh squeeze lemonade board on there, which will look so cute sitting on my farmhouse tables, upcycled from my a wedding present. It was actually a wedding present back from when we first got married. Let's see if we can see that one. So I haven't painted the base of these yet. They're going to be black, just like this one. And I'll finish sealing those and I'll be able to take some photos. Okay, we have some winners, guys. Let me just um, see, read who they are. Congratulations, winners. We have Cindy Longman Henderson, Mary Noakes and Joan Boyd Fisher. Congratulations all of you and please email support at essentialstencil.com let them know you're a winner from today's live and if you're watching the replay comment the word replay after the live and you've got another chance of winning if you watch the replay so thank you again so much for watching today i hope you enjoyed those tips why don't you upcycle something this week come and visit me on instagram youtube and guess what guys i've just joined tiktok yes at i restore stuff on tiktok if you're there not recommending that you go and get another social media platform, but if you're there, look me up. I'd love to see you there too. Bye.